The Jaden Sancho situation has gone a little bit quiet for a while. Well, it did until today. And the news that we all feared, it seems to be the truth that we all thought it was. That the Glazers are blocking Sancho's transfer to United. I want to explain how and why in this video. And make sure you stick around for the whole video. There's a special guest appearance from John from USA Red Devils. He's got a background of working on Wall Street. So he understands finances far better than I do, far better than most of us do. And he'll explain in detail and simple detail exactly how and why it's all been affected. So make sure you watch the whole video. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But let's talk about Jaden Sancho. And before I start, I want to introduce myself. There was this comment on the last video that went out on YouTube and absolutely cracked me up. I suppose I don't really ever introduce myself. I, I kind of think you all know me by now. But I'm Sam, 31, United fan, have been my whole life, season ticket holder since... The David Moyes first season, imagine that. I hate the Glazers and I love United and I know that they are the leeches that are the problem of this club. And I've said this so many times and this video is just going to be another example of just why that is the case. But let's get into the main talking point. And it comes from Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic and he is saying that the Glazers and Joel Glazer in particular are blocking United's pursuit of Jadon Sancho. And this is what Laurie said. He said, Joel Glazer is the one standing firm on United's position. Joel is paying particular attention to major spending and has expressed reluctance to reach Dortmund's 120 million asking price, plus the additional costs of salary and commission that are said to be significant. In truth, none of this will come as a surprise to anybody. We all know the Glazers are leeches and they suck money out of United. Annual dividends, never putting any of their own cash into the club, but it's just frustrating to see it happening again and 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 it's happening again with Sancho and that cash is the problem because United do not want to pay that much up front for Sancho despite the fact that he really probably is worth that much money and Laurie again goes into that bit in a little bit more detail. He said insiders think Sancho is worth 120 million even in this climate because of the potential decade of football before him. There are those in the game who are adamant Sancho's value would hold for many years and even rise if he were to replicate Dortmund performances at Old Trafford. Now, I would say that one of those people who are frustrated with this is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That's why he came out in the press before the Sevilla game and said, look, United need to spend to get better players than the ones we currently have. And of course, Sancho's value will go up in money at United. Look, it's very simple. If Sancho comes and United win all the trophies... Sancho's value will go up. Maguire's, Bruno's, every single player at United, the whole fabric of the club will be worth more money because we've won trophies. Success and trophies. That is intertwined at United and intertwined with sporting achievements at any elite level. To be considered elite, you have to win the trophies. You have to prove you are the best in your game. United were that for so long, but United aren't that anymore. And for United to get back up to there, we need to invest money. And Liverpool, unfortunately, the best examples of spending money to make money. Liverpool have now gone up in value because they've won the league. They've won the Champions League. United could do the same if we put the right money into it. And the Glazers are supposed to be businessmen. They're supposed to understand that return on investment comes when you invest money in the first place. And we've done it in, in drips and drabs. But look, ever since the Glazers took over... It, it was truly incredible that Fergie managed to sustain the amount of success he did with the resources that he had in comparison to the clubs around him. Even managing to overcome Chelsea's dominance when they came in and threw everything at it and came back on top. But then City toppled him, but then he won it back again. Look, Fergie won't be back. That won't happen again. Fact of the matter is United need to spend money. But it seems like that cash isn't there. And to really explain that in more detail, as I said... This is going to be an audio clip from John from USA Red Devils. Now, he has got a background working on Wall Street. And what he's done is written an excellent article over on USA Red Devils in which he does some financial projections about what United's cash flow will look like next year because that's going to be shaping the decisions that happen right now. Before I get into it, I want to explain a few things about the financial assumptions that John has made. 
In his model, John has said that United can host 25% capacity from September at Old Trafford. That's actually going to be October. And 50% capacity from January as a reasonable expectation. Talking about United not taking a significant hit in sponsorship revenue. Reasonable, but a bit unlikely. And that United do not lay off significant portions of their staff. I think that's reasonable. United have protected their staff throughout this, all of this. United will pay out a dividend. That happens every year. That's definite. And United do not sell any players. Now, I hope that's not the case because United do need to sell players for the fact that we need to get rid of the Deadwood. But as John would explain in this, we need it for the cash as well. Hey, it's uh, John from the American Red Devils. Thanks for having me on, Sam. Going to be talking Jaden Sancho, the transfer deal everyone is wondering about. 108 million pounds being quoted in the press. I decided to look at the financials and break it down. I do have a background uh, on Wall Street, and I've done this many times. John's done this all before. He knows more about finances than all of us do. So it's good to hear from an expert to offer us that real insight into what is properly going on with Sancho and the Glazers. You can garner essentially how much cash Manchester United has available right now on their latest filing. They're going to be filing again in September. I'll be keeping everyone posted as well. Essentially, I made a mock financial forecast of Manchester United. The key is match day revenue around £110 million to the club annually. If you look at fans coming back in the stadium at 25%, which is what I put in my model starting in September, ramping to 50% start of next year, 2021, I think that's an optimistic case. And what you see is Manchester United really have a cash crunch. Uh, in that scenario, they would have a low cash balance going forward of 73 million pounds. They would hit that in the third quarter fiscal year 2021, which is actually March 31st of 2021. Why is that such a big deal? Well, it sounds like a lot of money, but at the end of the day, Manchester United is a multi-billion dollar company. They need working capital. They have seasonal revenues. So Ed Woodward really can't let that cash balance slip below realistically 40 million pounds. So you're looking at maybe 20 to 30 net that Ed Woodward can really deal with and he can raise money through other venues. A 20 to 30 million net spend based on current cash flow? Oh man, just sell them all. Pereira, Jones, Mata, hell, even maybe De Gea, Lingard, go. Maybe that money for Bruno Fernandes in January really did come out of the summer transfer budget because 20 to 30 million is completely unreasonable. Completely unreasonable in the current market for elite level players that will change this Manchester United team. Players like David Brooks won't change this Manchester United team. They'll come and improve. They'll polish the edges. But diamonds like Sancho, they're going to cost a hell of a lot more than 20, 30 million. And the mad thing about all of this is back in May, United took out 140 million pounds from a credit facility. Now, we all saw that as United preparing for the summer, but maybe that was just United giving themselves a safety net to cover shortfalls that come from the coronavirus. And the coronavirus is, the Glazers didn't need any more ammunition not to spend, but it's, I just think that's what it's going to turn out being. And John makes an excellent point right at the end of this clip. We're talking commercial. We talked about uh, other players we could sell. Edward work could dish Lingard, raise some money that way, and he can fund the Sancho deal. It all comes back to the 108 million pounds. United won it structured because again, if you look at the financial forecast, they don't have the cash available. Um, so you're gonna look at something like that. Dortmund not willing to budge on the upfront payment. We all know the Glazers have been taking out money for years, and they've kind of put the club in a predicament. Ole's doing so great at the moment, but I don't know if Eddie is going to be able to back him, given he's worried about the worst-case scenario. What if fans don't come back? Look, a second spike could easily happen in the UK with the coronavirus, and fans may not return to Old Trafford this year. That will be an entire year without match day revenue and a massive source of income for United that may or may not go towards player transfer. So without that, and I don't know, the, just the finances seem very, very bleak when you do it like this. And I think that's what I wanted to do and show you in this video. It's not just about looking at the headline, the Glazers are blocking the transfer of Sancho and getting really arsy and irate about it. Get arsy and irate, but understand exactly why. And that's what I hope John's audio clip, thank you very much for that, John. You follow them at USA Red Devils on Twitter. And hopefully this whole video has helped you understand. Look, it's grim viewing. And I didn't think it was a possibility that we weren't going to sign Sancho this summer. I thought Sancho's done. You know, they're going to haggle to and fro. But given how weak United's 
cash flow is and how much weaker it could get depending on what happens with how many fans come back to Old Trafford XYZ. I do worry that it can be done now because Dortmund want that money up front, but the upfront money is the exact thing that United cannot seemingly afford. Stagger the payments out? Oh, hell yeah, we'll cover it, no problem. But Dortmund, they want it all up front, or at least a majority of it. And it seems like that really is going to be the sticking point for United. I don't know what a sweetener could be. Look, why don't we increase the, increase the offer to buy 20 million overall? But spread it out. So they get more for Sancho, but you just have to wait a little bit longer for it. Maybe something like that could work. Throw in Jesse Lingard. Maybe that, it won't swing any deal. But look, that is hopefully helped you understand what's going on with the finances. It doesn't justify it all. It doesn't justify anything. The Glazers are assholes. I hate them. But hopefully it helps you understand exactly what's going on with this cash flow situation. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you share the video. But the Glazers are blocking Sancho's transfer for United right now. And hopefully this video has explained exactly why.